it is hot. Hey everybody, it's Joe with J Blake Photo. Uh, we're getting down towards the end of August here in Las Vegas, but it is still super warm, so uh, doing a lot of inside videos right now. Today I want to talk for just a little bit about some of the rumors that are coming out about the new mirrorless system from Nikon. Uh, you guys know I shoot with Canon, but uh, just interesting things happening in the camera world right now, so let's talk about it for a second. So the last couple of days, I couldn't look at uh, news feeds, Twitter, Reddit, uh, or, or any of the RSS feeds that I follow uh, from some of the news sites without seeing some kind of information about the new Nikon mirrorless system that's going to be coming out. Uh, not to mention the fact that Nikon has been pushing it. And honestly, I got to admit, the Nikon marketing strategy has been rather successful. They've released four videos so far. Uh, one was pretty generic. Uh, one talked about the mount that they're going to be, uh, or I guess didn't talk about, but just showed, you know, a little bit about the mount that they're going to be using, uh, which seems to play into uh, what they're going to be pushing, kind of where their technology is going. There's also some videos uh, about, or a video about the lenses that they're going to be doing, and then the body itself, uh, and the history, the hundred plus years that Nikon has doing uh, SLR. Uh, bodies, but it looks like it almost feels like the um, the camera world or the technology world is a little a little split on this issue. So some of the headlines that I've been reading from Photofocus uh, are saying that the the mirrorless age is here, right? Uh, Photofocus thinks that it, this is going to be the tipping point where everything changes. But it feels like about half of the sources that I pay attention to are saying that this is gonna be a revolution. The other half are saying that this is just, you know, kind of the next evolution or the, or rather the next kind of general step in the, in the move towards a more mirrorless world. Um, so Photo Focus says it's a complete and, and utter tipping point. F Stoppers says, hold on, this is not the revolution, uh, at least not yet. Mirrorless cameras are not gonna take everything over just yet. And then The Verge, uh, a couple of days ago, had a story about how Sony says that they're the number one cam man camera manufacturer, uh, period. That they, for the first time ever, have beat Canon uh, in producing and selling cameras. Uh, which, considering the popularity of the A7R 3 and the A9, honestly, they're doing really good in the mirrorless world. So I'm not surprised that they're pushing a lot of cameras. Um, and of course, that story goes right along with the rumors from Nikon rumors that there's going to be this new camera, so um, or cameras. So let's kind of go over some of the stats, some of the information. Uh, here's what we we don't know anything, right? All we know is that they're going to come out with a new camera. We know that uh, there have been marketing videos about it. It's going to be mirrorless. It's going to be a new body. It's going to have a new mount, and there's going to be new lenses. That's really all we know so far. So let's talk about the stuff that is kind of in, in the rumor mill. Um, so we know that this is gonna be a full frame camera, but what we're hearing is that there's actually going to be potentially two different models. So they're gonna break their lineup into two different parts. So you're gonna have these kind of two different lines, these two different models of camera body. That the camera bodies are gonna be identical. So you have the same format, the same uh, form factor, same battery, same mount, same everything, but that the chip inside will be different. Um, and that it'll be called the Z series. So you'll have the Z whatever. A lot of people are saying it's gonna be the Z6 and the Z7 uh, as the two different models of this particular range of cameras that they'll both be full frame mirrorless and again, that they'll have the exact same body. So it seems like with these two models, they're gonna be really focusing on two different industries. So the first model, which we don't know if it's gonna be the Z6 or the Z7, is going to be uh, a 24 megapixel uh, low light performer. So very similar to um, what you would find in your standard DSLRs with big pixels, lots of light soaking pixels, probably some additional technology in there to improve uh, the ability for them to pick up light. And that because of the low megapixel count, it'll be a fast camera. So looks like they're gonna be concentrating on your low light shooters and maybe your sports photographers with the 24 megapixels with the super high speed. When they say super high speed, I'm accepting, expecting something between 15 and 25 frames per second. I think anything less than that, they'll have some issues in terms of competitiveness from the Sony and some of the DSLRs that they're also gonna be competing against from, from Canon and from their own um, Nikon lineup. For the 45 megapixel version, it looks like they'll be um, looking at primarily studio photography. So fashion photography, 
portraits, that kind of thing, where um, you're gonna be blowing up those prints or they're gonna be going in magazines or large marketing materials. That seems like a, a really great strategy, a legitimate strategy. Um, sometimes camera manufacturers seem to try and hit both of those segments at the same time and they kind of have a hard time pulling it off, but it sounds pretty good so far. The next rumor out there is actually about the lens lineup. Now, when you release a new camera system that's gonna require new lenses, um, even if you can adapt your older lenses, you've got to make sure that you have super high quality lenses to go with. And it sounds like they're going to be focusing initially on primes, which sounds really good for the, um, the studio model, the 45 megapixel model, where you're probably not going to need a lot of zoom capability, where you can use you know, what I call sneaker zoom, right, where you can walk uh, back and forth between where you're going to be shooting. Um, for the 24 megapixel version, if that in fact is one of the models that they're going to be selling, especially in the sports photography world or in just low light and photojournalism situations, um, having a zoom range can be super helpful. I'm not sure if people are going to be wanting to switch back and forth between primes, but I'm sure in the next couple of years they'll actually be coming out with newer technologies. With the lenses, it almost sounds like the mount that they're using is going to be um, some kind of a special thing. I'm not really sure, but I've heard some information uh, or from Nikon rumors I've read that um, they'll have a very large mount um, that will give them some additional advantages or technology. So I'm, I'm kind of interested to see what that's gonna mean. And the one thing that really sounds like it stands out from this uh, rumor roundup is that one of the lenses that they're going to be announcing is a F.95, less than F1, uh, 50 or somewhere in the 50 range, I've seen 50, 52, 58 uh, millimeter prime. So a super, super uh, wide open prime, which, you know, for super low light environments would be really, really great. Um, you know, wouldn't use it for portraits except for like some, you know, really kind of artsy. You really want to make sure that just the eyelashes are in focus, but the eyes are not. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of different uh, kind of art applications I'm sure that that, that could be used for. Definitely just a, a very kind of niche product that I think will be kind of interesting. So other than that, the only other things that we've heard is that the, the kind of hand feel, the functionality is very good, and that a lot of the functionality, you know, similar to what you see in the Sony mirrorless lineup, which makes sense because Sony is gonna be their number one competitor. So I'm kind of curious what is gonna happen here. I, I'm gonna be watching it closely over the next couple of days. I do not have really any intention on switching to a Nikon um, or a Nikon mirrorless for that matter. I just got a new DSLR uh, and I'm very happy with it. But what this does is it pushes the industry forward. It pushes the industry forward so that camera companies have competition and they're forced to do better for their customers. Um, there are a lot of features that are not currently available for the sub $2,000 camera line or even the sub $3,000 camera line for some cameras um, that I really think should be available now in this day and age. And I'm really kind of curious to see what we can what we can get out there. So I'm excited to see it. Uh, these are some really kind of interesting rumors. They are just rumors. We'll see. Uh, we've got about four days. Uh, the Nikon site actually has a countdown, but we'll be hearing that soon. And I'm excited to find out what we're going to what we're gonna learn about. All right guys, thanks for watching. Go ahead and hit subscribe. If you're not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and turn the bell on so you can get notifications when I put up new videos and go ahead and hit the like button if this is something you're into. If it's not, just go ahead and hit that, uh, hit that dislike button, but hit it twice if you really dislike it. Give me a comment, let me know what you think about the upcoming Nikon camera uh, and, uh, and I'm really excited to see what we see. All right, see you in the next video.